I'm going to lay out for you why it's so important when you see something or hear something, you say something. Let's start with this. I want so many people to die by my hand and then play with their guts while they're still alive. That's just one of the quotes. Or how about this? I want to strangle so many people to death right now. Nobody understands me, but they will understand how dead they will be in a minute. I'm going to kill so many people. At this point, I've given up. There's nothing left for me but anger, depression, and suicide. I feel like if I ever took over the world, every person that treated me like crap, I would take them and make them suffer and make them have a slow death, and I would enjoy every single minute of it. Right now, I got nothing that makes me happier right now but death or to make those people suffer. That's all I got right now. That's what Nathaniel Burkett was putting on a gaming site. Fortunately for us, the game moderator and other gamers who tried to talk to him on this gaming site called Crime Stoppers and or the moderator actually called the Raleigh Police in North Carolina and said, hey, we see some really freaky stuff. There's a lot more than I just read to you. That was a few of the highlights. So from the Raleigh police, they received information through their tip that maybe this was Winter Haven, Florida. It went to the Winter Haven Police Department, who turned it over to us. We had very limited information and a false name. We worked with six different social media networks and our gaming sites. Some of them cooperated a lot. Some of them cooperated a little. Some of them didn't cooperate at all. I want to call out Steam and their parent company, Valve. Finally, after a great deal of work by our real-time crime center, we were able to work our way through the six network sites and figure out that Steam and the parent company, Valve, were who we needed to get the information from. After hours and hours and hours of work, they said, we need a subpoena. It was four days, four days until they responded to us. Despite us sending the subpoena and saying, we've got someone who's talking about mass murder, it took them four days. So here's what I'd like to ask Steam and Valve. If he'd have been threatening to come into your business and shoot up everybody, would it have taken you four days to have provided that data to your local law enforcement agency so we could identify him? That's part of the problem we have. We have a social media world, and in that world is a lot of good people that are using that social media to work, to communicate, to do good things, to have fun. We also have people violating the law in the social media world. We also have criminals that are threatening to kill people in the social media world. And yet, you want to shut us out, law enforcement, from being able to go online or gather data from sensitive spots with court orders in order to communicate. Fortunately, after four days, we got additional information, which led us to believe Nat Nathaniel Burkett was not in North Carolina. He was not in Winter Haven, but in fact, he was in Sparta, Illinois. So we started working with the Sparta, Illinois law enforcement. They said, oh, we know him. We've taken him for a mental health evaluation. Along the way, we also determined that a church in Illinois had said, hey, don't come back to our church because of his outrageous comments. Think about that. But did the church call anyone? When the church saw something or heard something, did they say something? No, they didn't. They simply put him out of the church. 
isn't it fortunate for all the members of the church that he didn't shoot the church up, that he didn't come back and shoot the church up, that he didn't shoot up somebody else that he could have prevented? So after tracking Nathaniel Burkett through Illinois, we finally found his dad who said, look, he's with his mother, who's my ex-wife, and they're down in Florida on vacation someplace. So now we arrive back at Winter Haven after tracking him all around the United States. And we found him. And he confessed that he, in fact, was the one that did all the threats. I want to underscore that his mother, Sharon, was totally cooperative, was totally remorseful. She said, I've had him in mental health counseling in Illinois, and maybe this is God's way of getting him help. This guy here was not an active shooter, but this guy here was checking all the blocks in an effort to move toward being an active shooter. This person here is the one that all of you would have been standing at our doorstep saying, when they're saying this stuff, why don't you take them serious? When they said this stuff, why didn't you do something before they started shooting? Well, I can tell you our great detectives and our intel intelligence analysts in our real-time crime center, our 24-7 crime center that we just recently opened, did something before he escalated to actually shooting. Oh, he told the detectives once he was called, I didn't mean it. I was just angry. I don't have any friends. People reject me. They make fun of me. He was bullied. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today because this guy was checking all the blocks. I'm here today because many of the social media companies, which make millions and millions and millions and more millions of dollars, didn't cooperate or just cooperated enough to say that they checked the box. The one, despite us saying, we fear that we may have a mass murder any day. Valve and Steam took four days to get us this information. Here's a word to the social media companies. When we come with these urgent requests, we're not doing it for an exercise. We're not doing it as a sporting event. We're trying to intervene in advance and save people's lives. Now, would he have ever, or will he ever, manifest into an active shooter? We have no way to know that. But we do know this. He's now on the radar screen. We now have the opportunity to get him help, to track him, to watch him. He is just a few days away from his 18th birthday. So the issue that we're wrestling with today, and we've got the state attorneys involved, does he need to be waived to adult court and treated as an adult with his second degree felony? Or can we get him better services in the juvenile system? Our goal is to solve this problem. But I want to start by thanking the gamers, the moderator, who said, whoa, this is dangerous. He's dangerous. His communication is dangerous. I want to thank them for saying something. I want to thank the Raleigh police for not setting on it. They moved this information to Winter Haven. Our colleagues at the Winter Haven Police Department said this needs to go to the real-time crime center. Now this is this is one of them situations where something was caught in time, um, but 
with no help from the the big media companies. This is a perfect example of how Steam's customer service uh, definitely needs to be shaped up a bit. Uh, I would say uh, you could have killed people uh, just by simple negligence. And uh, you know these are subpoenas. This is this is where down the road now this kid goes and kills a bunch of people, and we want to blame some guns. Now and then you you want to blame games. Well, thankfully. For gamers, we don't have a bunch of uh, a body count. Thankfully, some people acted like they were supposed to and used some common fucking sense tactics and said, Hey, this person seems a bit unhinged. Perhaps we should say something. And wow, look. But to Valve, to Steam... You need to do some soul searching and get your shit together. Because uh, you could have killed some people. But, uh, big, big thanks to you gamers out there. You guys saved some lives. Good work.